the goal for Apple was to bring even more clarity to the design of the software while retaining the next powerful capability and ease of use. Apple started with the simplest of elements for the shape of a corner radius refinements and buttons and controls. And they brought the unified language of symbols to the Mac, making them more consistent and easier to recognize. Depth, shading, and translucency are used to create hierarchy. These new materials are rich in their vibrant and they bridge light and dark. Apple has also reduced visual complexity to keep the focus on users' content buttons and controls appear when you need them and they receive when you don't. There is a new way to access system level controls and a unified space for notifications and widgets. So today at NextGen Digital, we'll take a tour of Apple's Mac Operating System 11 Sur release. That is not only the biggest release, but also extremely powerful in features and design and provides a unified way of functioning across all devices between Mac, iPad, and iOS. Let's check it out. I've been using some version of Mac OS X for about two thirds of my life. And now it's kind of huge that we finally transitioned to Mac OS 11. With that said, in this video, we are going to go over some of the new updates and features in Mac operating system, Big Sur. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notifications whenever we share a new video. The first major change is the updated design and overall interface refinement. We'll start with the menu bar, which is now translucent and sort of blends in with the wallpaper and also adds some new useful features like control center, which gives user quick access to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, airdrop, dark mode, media playback, brightness sliders, and all of this is customizable. The notification center has been updated with group notifications, and these notifications are a bit interactive as well. You can also add widgets in different sizes, similar to iOS 14. Mac OS Big Sur does away with the energy saver section of system preferences, replacing it with a new battery section that expands the battery reporting capabilities of the Mac. There's a new usage history feature, which provides details of the Mac's battery life over the course of the last 24 hours or the last 10 days broken down into battery level and screen on usage that you can see exactly how your battery is performing. In Mac OS, Big Sur apps have added new full height sidebars, similar to what was introduced in iPad OS 14. And the dock looks a bit different with its new floating design and translucent look. Apple has also redesigned its app icons and made them all uniform in size and shape. Speaking of apps, a few apps on the Mac have been updated significantly. Starting with Safari, the start page has changed quite a bit with the ability to set custom background images and decide what appears on the start page by clicking the icon on the bottom right corner and then checking or unchecking the boxes that you want on your start page. You can now search out Safari extensions in the Mac App Store as extensions have their own dedicated category and there are new privacy settings for Safari extension themselves. Speaking of privacy, there is a new privacy button on the Safari toolbar, which will give you information about what each website is tracking and collecting during your visits to those pages. In the navigation bar, you will also notice a translation button that can basically translate web pages between seven different languages with just one simple click. The Messages app on the Mac received a huge update to be more in line with the new iOS and iPad operating system versions, adding features like 
pinned conversations, inline replies, group photos, and mentions. There's also an updated search engine for messages, which makes it easier than ever to search for links, photos, and the text that you are looking for. Like messages, Maps also received an update to match iOS and iPadOS with the new cycling directions feature added, as well as the new guides that are created to help users find new places to eat, shop, and explore cities from trusted brands and partners. And those lists will automatically update as time goes on with fresh new places to visit. New for the Mac is the ability to use Look Around a feature that allows you to virtually explore a city or landmark in three-dimensional and Maps for Mac has also gained support for indoor maps to help navigate around major airports and shopping centers before you leave home. Apple also added more privacy features to the Mac and information is specifically around the App Store and what app you're going to download, which lets you see a summary of the privacy practices for each app before you actually download it to your Mac. Apple compared this to looking at a nutrition label before purchasing food, and I think that comparison makes a lot of sense. All of the information that developers are required to report, that's being collected and tracked or shared with potential third parties. All of that information is there for your approval before you actually download the app. One last little side note for those who missed this sound when booting up your Mac. Fear not, Mac operating system Big Sur brings back the startup Chime now. Now there are tons of little features and hidden tricks that I will share some of the tips in my future videos for Mac Big Sur. But please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss that video in the future and leave your comments on how you're working on the Mac OS Sur release. As I wrap up this video, please take a few moments to visit my channel NextGen Digital, where you will get access to rich content on productivity, technology apps that could enhance your daily productivity. In addition to this, please do get access to my website where I write blogs and articles on productivity. Please do leave your comments and your reactions and do sign up for our newsletter. Until then, have a great one.